Hello and welcome into the Inside Nebraska YouTube page. I am Senior Recruiting Analyst Greg Smith, joined once again by staff writer Steve Mark, and we are back for another rapid recap video uh, or podcast if you're hearing this in audio form. Mm -hmm. I want to leave you guys out either. Uh, today was coordinator day, right? We heard from both offensive coordinator Mark Whipple and defensive coordinator Bill Bush. Yesterday, I uh, who didn't talk would yeah. be a, a better way to run it down. Uh, but that that cavalcade of people, I'm going to use a great word there, yeah. led by Mickey Joseph. Um, we also heard from Casey Thompson, Garrett Nelson, and others. Steve, what jumped out at you from either day of hearing from Nebraska football people? Yeah, I mean today, just uh, with uh, let's start with Mark Whipple. Um, he's got a tough tough task ahead of him guiding this Nebraska offense against a Illinois defense led by. Ryan Walters, Illinois' kind of up-and-coming rising star in the yeah. profession at, at yeah. defensive coordinator. Um, so, yeah, Whipple said that, you know, Illinois, it, they're very sound in what they do. He expects a lot of man-free coverage, which is just a lot of man coverage with the one high safety back there kind of roving around. Um, and, yeah, so that could mean a lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage for Trey, guys like Trey Palmer, um, obviously, coming off a 237-yard receiving day, school record uh, for, a, for a game. Um, but, yeah, uh, Whip, Whip also talked about how careful the staff wanted to be last week with Casey Thompson, the yeah. quarterback. They didn't let him throw a lot. Uh, Casey Thompson apparently just didn't do a lot outside of, you know, getting treatment in and getting maybe a lift in um, here and there last yeah. week. But um, he said uh, Casey Thompson came back refreshed, uh, healed up as much as he can with the bumps and bruises. He's taking Taking beating. Some shots. We say that yeah. every game. I yeah. feel like we are and always might, talking about yeah, that. <laughs> he might take some more on Saturday, but yeah. when you look at their uh, front seven. But, um, yeah, he said that Casey Thompson came back healthy, ready to go poised and energetic and obviously Casey um, sounded said all the right things sounded great uh, yesterday at the press conferences so um, yeah the, the offense has has a lot of you know things to kind of work through right now they need to try to find a run game because I, I just you know you look at the big playability that this offense has with Casey Thompson slinging the rock and it is big it is big play yeah we um, can't dismiss that for it, sure it it's, definitely it's is hit. a real factor yes yeah. it, it's hit uh, more than a few times yeah. but to to get where this team needs to get and possibly make a bowl bowl game with this five game stretch they need to run the ball yeah. behind the offensive line that has struggled to get any push and protect Thompson um, but yeah just you know, give some carries to Anthony Grant, the talented running back, and, and see what he can get. But, yeah, they just need to establish a run and just not rely so much on those deep passes. Yeah, and it's funny, too, Ed, one of the things that Whipple talked about was, you know, you want to get the ball to your best players. He said that Trey Palmer was their, is their best yeah. player, and they've done a check done on that one. They've gotten mm -hmm. the job done by getting him the football. The other part of that he did also mention is A.G. Anthony Grant. You've got to find ways to get him, to have him be more effective or return to the form that he showed earlier in the season. The talent is clearly there. We mm -hmm. saw it, right? It's whether or not he's going to have the space to run against some of these more more stout Big Ten defenses, and this is just the first of many um, that they're going to face, um, especially with, with the run defense that the Illini have. Now, they have not been tested as much or yeah. had as, as many strong tests in the past game, which I do think will be interesting, but it plays into the tendency of Whipple anyway, who wants to use that big play pass ability. So kind of marrying those two, and this is something that we talked about really going back to the offseason, right, is when the rubber met the road, would Whipple stay patient with the running game or would he only rely on that pass game? The pr it's not even a problem. I was going to say the problem is that it hits. Like, it's been doing well, and they have yep. not been able to run the ball. So there's a fine line there, um, and it has to be a really difficult thing to, to work through for him. And a little, bit, a little bit of the offensive talk, you know, trying to establish a run game, it goes back to what Mickey Joseph said yesterday was he wants the team to match the physicality the rest of the season from these last five opponents. And Illinois is pretty physical. They want yeah. to run the ball and play <laughs> yeah. defense. Um, so Whipple was actually asked about matching the physicality, and he had kind of a unique line. He said, you know, that'd be great if we can do it, but at the end of the day, points win football games. And I don't look at the scoreboard, I don't see any match, you know, phys matching physicality one point and matching physicality zero points. There's just, it's hard to, it's hard to, I guess, is what he's saying, hard to, you know, watch and, and kind of um, decipher. But, um, so yeah, that was a little interesting, I thought, with that the head coach. That will stick around for the yeah. week. I think that that'll, that will come up quite a bit. And, I, and, it's, and it's not necessarily like the worst thing in the world. I mm -hmm. do think that it shows a little bit of... You want to be lockstep between your head coach and your offensive coordinator and what it is that you're trying to accomplish and how you're trying to get there. Yeah. If your head coach wants you to be physical and run the football and get Anthony Grant more involved, 
that you need to do that first mm-hmm. of all. <laughs> Second of all, if your offensive coordinator thinks, "Oh well, we don't," it doesn't matter about physicality. We just need to score more points. Yes, that's technically true, but at the end of the day, like it's the Big Ten, man. You got to mm-hmm. be able to go out there and be physical. Otherwise, what we saw last week's game with kind of how Nebraska got beat up up front, yeah. will just continue and it will get worse these last few games because there are better teams that they're playing <laughs> as we finish this stretch. And I think it, I think Mickey also kind of said, you know, uh, yesterday he's somebody said something or asked him a question about you know scoring too quickly and maybe giving the defense a rest and and on offense running the ball trying to grind out first downs let the clock run help your defense out play complimentary football and he said you know what am i going to do go to offense and say don't score so fast it's like no you don't you don't really do that you just let them play and if it happens quickly like it has been against uh purdue um just let it go so uh, you know there's just like give and take with that with the physicality comment and the, the whole thing so no um, where they where you definitely want to be physical though is over on the defense right yeah bill bush also asked about the physicality today uh what do you think about his answer when it came to the physicality um and what the defense needs to do yeah i mean good he, he called his matchup a uh, monumental matchup again so that's just two monumental matchups yeah. that we got out of uh, bill bush um his word yeah it is his <laughs> word it was it was really cool but uh um yeah i mean he obviously understands what's what's coming at nebraska's defense mm-hmm. chase brown is should be in my opinion getting heisman talk he's, great year. he's yeah he's having a great year he's a big hard runner and he's you know leading the nation in rushing yards right now the offensive line is big they're going to be trying to move nebraska's defensive front back this is a big game for Nebraska's D-line and linebackers because Illinois is not very fancy in what they do. Bill Bush said they get fancy when they put two tight ends out there and 12 personnel, <laughs> which is really cool. That's but great. Yeah, for sure. But other than that, they're coming right at you, and they're going to see if you can stop it. And and if you do, they're going to keep coming at you again and yeah. see if you can stop see it for you, four quarters. Break eventually. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, this is just a really big game um, physically, and I think the players understand that. Garrett Nelson talked about it, um, you know, yesterday. So, uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of um, runs and, and kind of slow plotting offensive stuff coming at Nebraska's defense this weekend. So it's going to be imperative that they – hold up to it and Bill Bush did say you know we're not going to stop these guys yeah, we want to limit they're them. They're not going to get three yeah, yards. For sure yeah that was a good comment yeah <laughs> we're not, yeah he wants to limit them and contain them and not just you know let them run for 200 300 yards. And so. I think that the big thing too is getting off the field on third down right as we yeah. kind of think about what Nebraska has to do to it to I guess pull this upset as weird as some of this that may sound to some mm-hmm. of you listening to pull this upset against the number 17 Illinois team coming in here is that if Nebraska can, can like eliminate or really tamp down those 12 14, 17 play drives for mm-hmm. Illinois. Those would be demoralizing um, this Saturday or Memorial Stadium. So if Nebraska can keep those down and then hit with those big plays, maybe even get up on Illinois a little bit early. I think they have a chance to, to spring this upset. I don't count Nebraska out because of that big playability. But, man, what we were just talking about with that defensive front seven for Nebraska, they're going to have to show up in a, in a big way to be able to help pull that off. And with new faces, Bill Bush also, he, he called the loss of Nick Henrik from that season-ending knee injury just a, a punch in the gut and it is uh, to the defense he's a team captain he's he's a starting inside linebacker the bright side um luke reimer is coming back and i think he'll likely play um they didn't say that but he said he's he's back in full full go at practice and looking good and he missed the purdue game and um will be back this year but yeah you're gonna have chris klarvik starting out there you're gonna have itiva va clemens out there ernie, ernie yeah you mentioned ernie <laughs> yeah for sure and ernie ernie hausman of course the true freshman who's had kind of a, a rough start to his career but he's in a really tough situation really tough and i think yeah. that that's expected right yep. i think that this will we'll be talking in a couple years from now to ernest hausman about how this year served him well to go through those yep. bumps and bruises watch just put a pin in that it'll be a story um, line it'll be a real years, story yes. line in two or three years absolutely but all right that's going to go ahead and do it for us today make sure you're checking out nebraska.rivals.com over at inside nebraska for all continued coverage of nebraska's big matchup against number 17 Illinois. We also have a big volleyball match tonight on Wednesday uh, with Nebraska taking newly number one yeah. <laughs> Nebraska volleyball taking on Wisconsin. We also have plenty of recruiting coverage as the staff was out in full force this past week as well during the bye week. For Greg Smith, Steve Mark, we'll catch you next time.